Hello everybody and welcome back to the Blue Lady Couture Sewing Room and a very warm welcome to the next instalment of my Edwardian History Bounding Lookbook. If you haven't already, do be sure to go and check out the previous videos in the playlist for this series. And if you enjoy this video, please do give it a like by clicking the little thumbs up icon and leave me a comment down below because it really does help my channel out. First of all, I'd just like to apologise as I appear to have lost the introduction and some of the initial sewing footage for this video, so I am diving right into showing you a clip of the design and adding this voiceover. Today I'm going to be showing you an overview of how I create my Mary Bolero jacket. The Mary is one of the styles that I offer in the classic collection in my Etsy store, and I'll pop a link in the description box if you're interested in taking a look. I really hope this video will inspire you, whether you are a sewer yourself or are a potential customer of Blue Lady Couture. Also, don't forget to watch to the end when I reveal the full outfit and head off for a nostalgic steam train adventure. So I already have the skirt made in petrol linen and you can see the making of the blouse in a previous video in this series. And I also wear it with my seaside outfit as well. So I'm going to be making this jacket in petrol linen to create a nice coordinated suit and the finished styling is going to be loosely based on the classic 1970s movie of the railway children, uh, you know the one starring Jenny Agatha in the uh, my daddy my daddy scene. So to start I need to adapt the jacket pattern from my seaside outfit and reshape the front panel and the sleeves which is where we're going to pick up in my sewing room. So here you can see I have the two halves of the uh, bodice for the jacket complete. So we have the outer shell in the linen here and we have the lining under here as well. Um, as you can see I have added in some fusible interfacing onto the inside of the lining and I've just stitched it down as well because you do always find that especially when you're uh, applying this onto a polyester fabric um, this fusible interfacing doesn't always stick because you can't always get your iron quite hot enough to, to fuse it really well. So I always like to just stitch it in as well to um, just make sure it's anchored um, so it doesn't come apart on the inside of the, the garment and, and start drifting it back because that's that's just not, not good. Um, yeah, so and then you have a nice stitch line um, just running on, showing on the um, what will be the inside of the jacket, um, inside the lining. So that's just that's a, a nice little touch, I think. So, 
So yeah, um, I have also just put in um, a small dart on the front bodice panel. Um, so I've done that on both sides and um, replicated it on the, the lining as well. Um, and that's just to make sure that the jacket nips in um, around the, the waist and just curves in a little bit underneath the bust and um, to just give it a little bit more of a, of a fitted look. Um, but this is by no means a, a fitted jacket. It's just to, just to give a little hint of shaping, which is always nice. So now my next task is to put the sleeve pieces together um, and put those into the, the linen layer and the, the lining layer before I can put the two pieces, the two halves, the two sides of the, the garment together. Um, then I also need to do the, uh, the, the back collar. Um, we've already got the, the reverse uh, already in place in situ um, cut onto the, the, the bodice panels, but the, the back collar is a separate piece, so I need to add that in first before I can put the two layers together. So we're getting there, not, not too far to go now. Um, so far. Um, so the cuffs are simply a rectangle of fabric um, stitched together to create a band and as you can see on one half I have put some interfacing to give it a bit of support and a bit of structure and here this stitching line is where I have stitched the velvet trim on so it matches in with the rest of the, the jacket and that is then caught into the seam so I'm not having to like have any bumpy trying to stitch that down over the, the, the seam line there so that's all caught in there nicely. So now I will just fold nose. So now I will fold those through. Um, on this one I have pressed over the top edge just so that makes that easier when I come to inserting the sleeve. Um, this nice crisp edge gives me a nice guideline um, um, of where the seam allowance is and you know it is ready to just be stitched in place. So now I need to do she says is turn it because we've got the interfacing that's gonna make that nice crisp edge along the bottom there. that can just be pressed again and um, just to tidy it up and neaten it but that is just about ready to have the or be attached to the bottom of the sleeve. I've made it so that it's just an inch bigger than my wrist um, and that's just enough for it to slide over over the, the width of my hand um, but it still looks like a nice a nice snug wrist cuff about the need for any additional buttons or hooks or anything to to make it any tighter I think that would be just nice so I've just run gathering stitches around the base of the sleeve the hem of the sleeve um, and I'm just now gathering it up to put it into the cuffs So I'm just whip stitching the cuffs down by hand to finish them off um, because these are such teeny tiny cuffs um, I can't easily get it under my machine um, it certainly won't go around the, um, the, 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 the extension, the cuff extension when you take the base off the machine and it's just a bit too tight and fiddly to kind of get it 
through the machine the other way up. So it's just easier just to stitch it down <laughs> by hand with some quick little whip stitches. And it's just going to give a neater finish overall. My next task is just to stitch up the hole between the lining and the outer where I turned it through. So again, I'll just whip stitch this by hand. So my final task to finish off the bolero jacket is to create the buttons and these are purely just decorative buttons but I need to make six um, in the blue linen, the petrol linen and then I need to make six which I'm going to cover in black silk um, to go on the collar, it has a little decorative detail on there. So I just use the prim um, button blanks you can get these in either plastic or metal. Um, I prefer the metal. I'm you know, trying to cut back on using too much in the way of plastic you know, notions and things like that. Um, so yes, yeah, so I do prefer to use the metal if I, I can. I mean, there's no precise art to this. I use a, a template that I've cut out on a, a piece of scrap fabric. Um, I'm trying to cut as many buttons as I can out in one go. So I folded the fabric and pinched it together so that there's three layers there, which is just enough that I can cut this out without too much issue. Um, and that means I'm only having to uh, cut out these buttons twice overall. So the most tedious thing about making your own buttons or covering your own buttons is doing the gathering stitches around each of the buttons which <laughs> when you've got you know what well, well I'm making 12 today so yeah I've got 12 buttons to sew around it takes time but it's the only way you can get that nice matching finish by having you know your fabric covered buttons so here we go <laughs> Approaching. 
morning.